So I guess we can talk a bit about um, Plasma Mobile then, because I, I, I've I actually haven't used Plasma Mobile myself. I've used a bit of like the what is what is Gnome's one called? Is it? It's not Gnome. Uh, no more. Is it called Gnome? Or Fosh. My, yeah, no, it was Fosh. It's the yeah, it's it's Fine. yeah, yeah, it was Fosh. Um, uh, I was sent to a Linux phone a while back. Um, so I don't have direct experience with Plasma Mobile. But everything I've seen of it, it looks like it's in a pretty good state. But I guess you would have a much better, very unbiased opinion on the state of it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's a tough project because, like, actually, what like when I started working on big screen, things just seemed a lot simpler <laughs> to approach because <laughs> you know it's, it's it's a computer, right? We we don't have to usually nowadays. You develop for like x86 and just, mm. well yeah if you, if you don't have like mobile devices have so many different things that can go wrong right 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 um we care like we also care a lot about different things like sleep and battery life oh okay we care about battery life on desktop too but like mm -hmm. there's a lot of places where things can go wrong mm -hmm. so plaza mobile right now in theory it works pretty well uh-huh Sometimes we have problems with certain devices. It could be a distro issue. It could be the way that we're interacting with like the device. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, drivers, like the people at Post Market OS who, uh, for context, they work on a distribution that's for mobile devices. And they, they have, they compile like the kernel, they have all the patches that are necessary. There's like a lot of different things that go on in the project. So it's a very, very unique distribution, mm -hmm. but they've done like really good work on trying to port to all these different phones these you know formerly android phones now um you know they're trying we're trying to put linux like a full desktop linux on it mm -hmm. um they've done good work and we've had a lot of collaboration with them but like right now i would say that we still have a lot of work to do <laughs> uh -huh. yeah only certain phones even have calling and sometimes, like, we're missing things like voice over LTE, mm -hmm. uh, which is now a requirement for calling in many places. Um, so we have sometimes some problems with sleep. Mm -hmm. Some devices interact weirdly with the way that we're doing sleep, I think. I, 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 don't, I don't totally know about the situation mm -hmm. about that. But, uh, yeah, I think most of the issues are is just we have to deal with hard. Not only is there like not only do we have to deal with the shell and making stuff work for like a phone, we also have to deal with the layer below getting the actual our base working and right, the dealing right. above. We have to also deal with apps. So it's like like especially a few years ago when I first started the project, we were dealing with the Pine Phone, hmm. going up and down the stack constantly was like a really it split my attention a lot. So. Mm -hmm. Progress has been kind of slow in general, I think. Mm -hmm. Slower than I would have liked. So what was it that got you sort of interested in working on it? Yeah, uh, I guess I was bored during the pandemic. <laughs> fair fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> well, I have wanted to do open source contributions for a long time. And at the time, the Librem 5 was making a lot of news. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the Librem 5 and the Pine Phone, I think, was just announced. And they, I don't know, like both of them had some sort of talks with KDE initially about using Plasma Mobile. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of wanted to jump in and I looked at it and I, I tried Plasma Mobile on a VM and I thought there's like some things I wanted to try working on, like maybe some of the apps. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I did was work on the clock app mm -hmm. in Plasma Mobile that now is convergent, so it's also on Plasma Desktop. but. Um, yeah, I worked on some app development. Uh, the maintainers at the time, like Bushan's still active, but he was like the key driver for Plasma Mobile for like, especially like the first seven years of its existence from like 2015. Um, he helped me get kind of on board onto KDE and how to contribute, how things work in general. And just over time, I kind of just... I mean, there wasn't like an announcement or anything. I just over time just got more and more responsibility and mm -hmm. responsibilities in working on things. And so I started like, I was working on an app and then there were some things I wanted to, like I want to improve Kirigami, right? Because we were missing a lot of controls from mobile. 
So then I started working Kirigami, then I worked on other frameworks that are UI related. Mm -hmm. Then I realized that, you know, there's some, now that I kind of know Qt, I can work on some things in the shell. So then I worked on the lock screen mm -hmm. and then I started working on the home screen. And then at some point, um, like Bouchon moved on to, he had a, like a job change. Mm -hmm. And so he was a lot less active in Plasma mobile development mm -hmm. at that point. Like I already had the KD developer access to be able to review merge requests and things. I kind of took over development of the shell. Yeah. So is you gotta get your your you've kind of your hand a bit in everything then at least over the time you've been in there. Yeah. Yeah, like no, you know, like I worked within KDE, but I was also like at the time we collaborated a lot with Minjaro mm. because the Pine or Pine sixty four, I think in twenty twenty or twenty twenty one they announced their KDE edition of the Pine phone that would ship with Minjaro with Plasma Mobile. Mm, 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 and then mm. eventually, like when, when they stopped the, doing the different editions of the Pine phone and they just sold the Pine phone, they just shipped that software. Mm. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I think like 50% of my time was just investigating why things broke again. Uh, on and off and on and off. I wasn't working on the Pine phone with Minjaro. It was kind of a tough time at that time because, yeah, I couldn't really spend a lot of time working on the shell. It's just de it's just wrote, like debugging and debugging and debugging. There was always something changing somewhere. Mm. So it was definitely hard for me, I think. But I don't know, over time, things stabilized. Like our support for, I think because of Plasma Mobile, our support for, in, in Plasma, our support for virtual keyboards has gotten a lot better. Mm -hmm. So... And there's like a lot of different things that have improved over time for us to now, like the past two years, I think I've been pretty good for stability. Um, we've generally not really encountered nearly as many regressions as before. Mm -hmm. And so I think the project's on a pretty good trajectory now. Linux, like a li Linux desktops on phones has always been like a very interesting thing to me, whether it be Fosh, Gnome Mobile, Plasma Mobile, any of this stuff, because... Like the the main focus of the mobile space, it's it's Android and it's iOS, and there are like Android ROMs that exist, but mm. then there's this like little this little thing off to the side that some people are like trying to trying to like create this this Linux this Linux phone thing, and I think it's it, I think it's neat that it's like it's this sort of trying to create some sort of market there that even though the range of devices that can be supported just because drivers and all this fun stuff and then the extra fun part so you talked about how some phones don't support um like calls you have another problem where some um some sim providers have a device uh to support a device list like a vodafone yeah, <laughs> yeah my, the the um so when I tried to use the Linux phone I have, um, I couldn't because they have a specific list of devices that the SIM card will work in and nothing else. Yeah, that it's just there's so many hurdles. <laughs> um, I think it makes it quite tough. Uh, the approach, it's just the, the approach that like a lot of Linux mobile and post -Marker OS is taking is mm. something called... They say it's called mainlining, mm. where we try to use like an upstream. We try to we try to use like the latest Linux kernel, and then we, if there are things that aren't supported, which almost most definitely there is, uh, then they, they add patches onto that kernel, mm. um, and it's they try to keep it up to date. But the problem is, it's it's just like for every device we have to port port to, mm -hmm. uh, and beyond like carriers not supporting things. We also have to, like, post-market OS, the contributors always have to figure out for every new SOC, they need to figure out, like, getting camera drivers, getting modem drivers, getting all, all that stuff. Right. Um, there's another approach that, like, Ubuntu Touch and Sailfish OS, mm -hmm. and I think the Droidian project is taken, is um, in something called Holium, mm -hmm. where you use the original kernel that Android uses 
which already has like all the drivers for everything because Android, you know, like the when the, when the phone was running Android, it already had support for all these things, right? Right, right, right. We take, we take out the the Android part, mm. we use the same kernel, but then we put like Linux, you know, our, we put our Linux desktop stack onto that. And uh, generally you could expect to have, yeah, all the drivers and everything are there, but it's just usually you're running a kernel that could be ridiculously old and you'll encounter all sorts of weird hacks and things to get things working. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's like upsides and downsides to both approaches. Mm -hmm. um, whether which one is better. I mean, for sure, the mainlining one that Postmark OS is cleaner, but yeah, yeah. like there, you've seen, I think, more results right now. Or like, like Ubuntu Touch has way more supported devices, so mm. it's kind of a trade-off. <laughs> right, right. 